Welcome to our video tutorial on getting files from Mariko Theta SC2 over Wi-Fi and saving it to the pictures directory of your Windows computer. This is video number eight in our tutorial series. The GitHub repository for the completed code example is available in the description on the playlist. In the previous tutorials, we've completed the entire application, including the GUI components, the notifiers, local storage, and the network. We used a list of images from this free site, Lorem Pixum. Today, we're going to focus on the Rico Theta. This technique will work with any of the Rico Theta models. Inside of the get URL list file, go to the Theta method, Theta method. Let's start constructing a URI. The Rico Theta camera, when accessed with AP mode, is always 192.168. Dot one, dot one. As we're connecting to the SC2 in this test, it can only connect to the uh, desktop computer with access point mode. There is no client mode on a Rico Theta SC2. If you have a Rico Theta Z1, client mode connection is possible. We do not cover client mode in this tutorial. We need to get the list of the files on the camera. In order to do this, we need to pass it commands execute and then list files. This will generate a list of files that are on the camera. Once we have the list of files, we need to parse out the URI from each of the file listings. The body will be name and it's camera dot list files. Initially, the body will be a Dart map. We'll need to convert the Dart map into JSON in order to send it over to the camera. Although the variable on line 17, which extends out to line 22, looks like JSON, it is a Dart map. You must convert it into JSON before you send it to the camera. In this tutorial, we're only going to put the images. We're not going to access the video files for simplicity. I'm just going to grab five files down under the entry count. The max thumb size is required. This parameter is broken on the SC2 and it will not send over the thumbnail. So even if you put the max thumb size to 640, you will not get the thumbnail from the SC2. You have to use a different technique. If you're trying to get the thumbnail, there's other videos or you can drop a note in the comments or on our forum and we can explain to you how to get the thumbnail from the SC2. The camera.list files command only sends over the text uh, information on the file. It does not actually transfer over the binary files yet. One of the pieces of information we get back from the command for each file will be the URI. The Rico Theta cameras have an HTTP server inside the camera, which complies to the Open Spherical Camera specification from Google. You can easily get the file and bring it over to your desktop or mobile app application with a get command using HTTP. Because this uh, is a post request and unlike, um, there's a couple of commands where you don't need the header. So you could give an info or a state without the header, but this particular command, it will likely break if you don't have the headers. It depends on the camera model and the firmware version. So we're going to set up the headers here to send with the HTTP request. So just a heads up that if you do not pass the headers in, some of the commands and some of the Rico Theta models will break. With the header, body, and URI constructed, we can now begin making the request. We're going to start the request in a response. We must make a post request when we get the list of images from the camera and thus there's more parameters here. So the, the syntax is you first have the URI, then it's the headers and the body. Uh, you can switch the position of the headers and the body because it's a named parameter. The body we constructed is a map. You must JSON encode it before you send it over. The body is also a named parameter, which you'll need to specify in the future with body colon. I'm going to have to go back to the request and make the change later. The method itself is asynchronous because we'll have to wait for the list from the camera over a network connection. Because we're using async and await, the list that we return will be a future. We need to specify it as a future because we don't know when we're going to get the network response back. 
as we're generating the list of URLs from uh, HTTP connection, we're going to need to import the HTTP package into uh, this file so that we can make the HTTP request. After you import the HTTP package, this, this must be in your pubspec.yaml. But after you import it, go back to the request and specify the body named parameter. So insert body colon ahead of JSON encode body. We're still going to need to parse this response quite a bit before we can actually get the list of URIs. However, I like to test things in small steps. So uh, let's first connect uh, or, or change the connection from the get image button so that it's accessing this new method or this extended method that we are working on, the theta method. So go to the get image button and comment out the sample code that we had earlier that was pulling the files from Pixum. Let's just first change it so that it accesses the, um, the, the get URL list from the theta method. And once we start getting some output, then we can begin parsing this thing more. Also, recheck the body parameters that we're actually passing over to the camera. There was a typo when I spelt a max thumb size. So we're going to have to go back to that and correct the problem with the, the thumb size. Notice on line 26, it should be there should be a B after the M. Once you correct the typo in the body, and so it's a thumb with a B, max thumb size, test the application again. You can see in the debug console that we have the information from the files. The connection to the camera is taking place and we can get the list. We now just need to parse it. The output that we receive from the camera is gonna be JSON. It's gonna be a string. In order to make the body easier to parse, I'm going to convert it from the JSON string into back into a Dart map. So let's create a variable called file map and then decode the JSON that is in the response body. Once the JSON is decoded, it'll be easier to get the individual elements from, from the Dart map. If you look at the output of the JSON, you'll notice that the individual file, so each image file, is in something called entries. So we'll first extract the entries element out of the information that we're receiving. In the output from the camera, there's going to be results. And within results, there's going to be entries. And within the entries, that's a list that we're going to save into this variable temporarily uh, entries list. And that will have the information about each file that we'll need to parse. So the information on each file, one of the uh, elements of that will be the URI. We're going to iterate over this list, this entries list. And for each of the entries, we're going to look for the file URI. So we'll, we'll create a temporary variable uh, entry, and it will just iterate over the entries list. And then within the loop, we're going to assign the URL or um, assign the file URL to the list of URLs. So the list of URLs is called URL list, just using the standard dot add. Uh, for each entry, uh, the thing that we're looking for is the file URL. Once we extracted just the list of file URLs, we can then return this to the, uh, the button or connect it to the button press and then at least get a output to the debug console so we can see whether our parsing is working or not. And it works. We now have a list of files that's on the camera. If we can click on each individual file, you can actually see the image directly from the camera in a web browser. The camera contains an HTTP server that does respond to GET and POST requests. Once we have the list of file URLs, now our application works exactly the same as if the files were on Lorem Pixum or any other HTTP server. By using a list of URLs, we can just easily plug in the theta whenever we want to and have it pull all the files from the theta as if it was just an image server.
The only modification that we need to do is that since the list of the files to download is being generated from a network, we need to put a weight in front of the method theta once, you know, in order to wait for the URL list. So what, but once we have the URL list, we can then pass it to download images and the downloads should take place. So let's add a wait. Now we have the URL list and we can test it. When we test it, uh, there's going to be considerably more waiting for the images because the images from the SE2 are much larger than they are from Lorem Pixum. So even though the camera is right next to my computer, the download is taking uh, a couple of seconds. Each file from the SE2 is roughly three to five megabytes. If it's from the Z1, it's between seven and nine megabytes per file. For, for comparison, the files from Laura Pixum at 800 pixels wide were roughly about 55 kilobytes. So a fairly big difference, right? 55 kilobytes compared to, um, let's say, even for the SC2, that's roughly maybe three to five megabytes, a pretty big difference. The SC2 is also limited to 2.4 gigahertz. The Z1 can use five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which will lead to a faster download. In my test, there's also something a little weak about the SC2 Wi-Fi chipset, where sometimes the bandwidth is low. However, I can always get the images from the SC2 I just might have to put my camera very close to my, the Wi-Fi uh, antenna on my computer. Uh, image quality is quite good. One of the ways to work with the uh, SE2, because the files on the camera are fairly large, is to use thumbnails. So these, this example is using thumbnails uh, both on the left and the right. Uh, the right-hand side is uh, responsive, so the grid view will change the number of thumbnails on it depending on how wide the screen is. Both of these are running on Windows as well as the Android application. If you have any questions about development for the Ricoh Theta camera, you feel free to drop it into the comments or on our forum. Based on the response from this video, we'll decide what to do with content going forward, whether people want more of this type of videos or whether we should focus on Android, iOS, uh, different types of desktop applications, or different features of the camera API. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get updates on additional tutorials that we'll be building in the future. If you like this type of video, give this one a like, and have a great day.